Hello and welcome everybody. My name is Nancy Ray Allen and I am your epic life and business coach. And I skipped the fancy intro today and all the bells and whistles because I have something very important that it's time to talk about. Something that is needs to be addressed, <laughs> that gets to be addressed right now. Um, a few months ago, I made some comments about the Me Too movement that resulted in some really intense outrage and criticism. And a lot of what I was sharing was massively <laughs> misunderstood. And that's okay, because depending upon where people are in their healing journey, certain things can really trigger them, their past trauma, fear, and all of that. So I know moving into this conversation that there will be some people, especially people who've been in situations of um, domestic abuse or in, in any sort of, hey Elise, Hey Rhonda, um, or who have been in, in situations where they've been assaulted that may find this very triggering and upsetting. So I'm just going to give you a warning that maybe this is not the best uh, a training for you to be watching. So I want to talk about something that's going on right now in society, and it's actually been going on for quite some time. Um, when we saw women kind of move into this women empowerment um, dealio, what happened was oftentimes in order to feel empowered, what they thought that meant was that then they needed to go and like disempower men. Like if men are disempowered, then I'm more powerful. And it became kind of the battle of the sexes, this competition thing. And it is, you know, this isn't everywhere, but this is kind of a phenomenon. Hey, everybody jumping on Pete, Kat, everybody, Kelly, um, that we see going on and happening. So I'm not sure how many of you are aware of the movement that's happening today, but I received a message late last night, um, almost a little bit before 10 p.m., that said, tomorrow is a female blackout from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. Put a one in the comments if you got this message, women. Um, it's a movement to show that the world, what the world might be like without women. Your profile picture should be just a black square so that men wonder where the women are. Pass it on only to women. This is a project against domestic abuse. It's no joke, share it, okay. So give me one if you guys, any of you got this message, and I'm going to talk to you about um, the problem with this message and this movement and the way that people are approaching it. Oftentimes, the way we approach an issue or a problem perpetuates and it makes it more of a big deal. First of all, the way that this message is worded is that basically men are the problem and women are the ones that are domestically abused and the men are never domestically abused and that men are bad and malicious and men are predators. Now again, I know for women who've ever been in a situation where they were the victim, the receiver of aggression from men, this could be incredibly triggering. But it's important that we address this because 97 plus percent of the male population is fucking amazing, loving, caring. I'm getting emotional about this very noble, incredible men that are not even given a chance because wounded women approach them as aggressors and as the problem and as lazy, dumb, stupid, sexist, bigots or whatever the fuck the story is. Now, I'm going to be applying this in just a minute to how it actually shows up internally in you between your feminine and masculine energy because we each have both. But the biggest reflection, the mirror that's showing up in society and in our relationships, you guys, is that men are bad and that they're evil and wrong. And it's really, really a fucked up perception that is disempowering to not only them, but especially women as well. Um, men's nature is one that desires and seeks intimacy, that desires to protect and defend. But I'm going to read you an excerpt from a book that I'm reading right now. This book is called The Queen Code. And there's a woman in it that's talking about she, as a child, was um, sexually assaulted. Uh, I think she was like 10 or 11 years old. And she's now like working through some of that stuff. And her mentor says, you know, it is true that there are dangerous men, right? Like, let's be honest. There, there, are, there are individuals out there, men and women, but there are men out there that are dangerous, okay? That are operating in this crazy, dark, fucked up place in their mind where they intend to harm women, children, potentially other men, right? That's a reality, okay? So you guys, I'm not denying that that's a reality. And I also know that so much of the hurting of people who've experienced this 
and people who um, are, are potentially being groomed into becoming like this can be healed and changed if we will wear this. Um, I love this. I don't feel like changing my profile picture. I will be sharing this on my profile in my groups. Thank you so much. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so this is what she says. It's true that there are dangerous men. Unfortunately, when a woman has encountered one, especially as a child or early youth, she often concludes that all men are dangerous. Then she spends a lifetime defending herself against all men, not only the ones that deserve it. So here's what happens. Because of the way men's brains, and again, I'm being super general, are typically um, wired more for a single focus. Women are, tend to be more um, multitaskers, and, and the way our brains kind of work are, is different. And again, this is being general. I know there's obviously people outside of this, okay? That when a, when a man, okay, so here, I'm going to just read it to you, okay? Since men are single focused, if they have to defend themselves, they cannot simultaneously defend the women that they would otherwise gra gladly protect. In other words, they can't defend her because they're too busy defending themselves from her. Thus, she's left on her own when she could have had most men on her side. <laughs> I hope you guys are seeing the... the, the all the nuances of this and how powerful this understanding is. That when we demonize masculine energy, it immediately goes on the defensive. It immediately becomes the demon. It becomes the bad guy. And they're men in general, masculine energy, okay? And I hope you're applying this to yourself internally. Its desire is to defend and protect. But if it is so busy trying to defend itself from criticism, condemnation, um, overgeneralization, impatience, women often massively, massively, massively misunderstand men. This happens all the fucking time. And part of the reason this is, is men's brains and the way that they're, they have singular focus, masculine energy. So again, apply this to yourself, okay? The internal relationship between you and you, the feminine and the masculine, Oftentimes your feminine energy, and pay attention to this, okay, internally, your masculine energy is the doing energy, right? It's productive, it's, it's, it's um, more organized, and, it's, and feminine is more of a flowing, spontaneous. We all have masculine and feminine in us. Men have masculine and feminine. Everyone has masculine and feminine, okay? And the feminine is more like intuitive and flowing and creative, and the masculine is more like productive, efficient, logical thinking, Okay? And the marriage of these two is what creates. The masculine and the feminine is what makes a freaking human. Imagine when your masculine and feminine are united, what would freaking explode in your life and business? I hope you guys are paying attention to this. Please, please take note of this. Internally, if every time your masculine energy takes action, right? Like uh, uh, goes and speaks at a networking event, posts something online, gets up early, works out, um, makes a sale, all right? You make a sale and, and you bring home the kill. You bring home the sell and your feminine energy goes, that's it? That's all you got for me today? It's pathetic. It's not enough. It's not enough. Here's where we want to be. Here's where you're operating at. Not enough, not enough, not enough. This is what we do to the men and masculine energy in our life. It's never enough. It's underperforming. We demonize it. We make it wrong. We make it bad. We're, we compare it to a weird standard that's not even reality. Oftentimes women, and again, this is in this book as well, so double check this book out, The Queen Code. Women often compare ourselves to like a perfect perfect person, a perfect being. And it's this really weird, like esoteric identity thing that we strive to be. And they look a certain way, they act a certain way, they weigh a certain way, all of this stuff. Okay. And we, we strive to achieve that. And then not only do we like hold ourselves to this ridiculously high standard, we also hold men to that standard. So not only do we hold, like we expect men, first of all, to act and think and feel like women and then we hold them to this perfect standard that we as women can't even achieve this crazy fucked up, like perfect, deluded version of a woman. We can't even achieve it. But then we try to make our men fit it as well. I hope you guys see it. It doesn't make any sense. 
And there's, there's no real validation, affirmation, or celebration of every micro step in the best direction. Every time you get up early or take an action or post online or make a sale, celebrate it like crazy. But imagine how decastrated, demasculinated internally your own masculine energy is because of the way you harp and nag it. No matter what it does, it's not enough. No matter what it does, it's not enough. Ever. It's just not good enough. And I'm not saying we don't set high standards. And I'm not saying we don't continue to expand. What I'm saying is when we approach things with celebration and affirmation, they grow and expand. Your masculine energy inside of you is going to be way more motivated, excited, and driven to go for it and to create for you in your life when you celebrate it. When it brings home a rabbit, you're like, that's amazing. You just went hunting and you brought home a rabbit. That's amazing. Thank you so much. I'm going to make the most beautiful stew. Versus you brought home the rabbit. Mm, that's all you brought home today? Like you couldn't bring me like an elk or something better than this? And then the masculine energy brings home an elk and it's like just one? Just one? Just a six point? I mean, I'm not a hunter so I'm making shit up. But you guys see what I'm saying? This is what we do. It's never enough. We castrate the masculine energy inside of us. And then people wonder why they have no motivation, why they're not driven, why they're not landing cells, why they're not landing gigs, why they're not, they're, they have no, first of all, men are not attracted. And again, masculine, feminine energy, money, women, like these things are all connected, okay? Not attracted to a woman that is spiteful, angry, and vindictive. They're just not. So if you internally are spiteful and angry and vindictive towards your masculine energy, it can never do enough. You have literally like zero attractiveness <laughs> to calling in clients, money, and opportunities. Zero attractiveness. None. Now applying this back to this movement that's happening today of like black out your profile picture, yada, yada, yada. You guys, we're, we're not going to find a solution if men, masculine energy, is always wrong and bad. Demonizing one or the other, blaming blah, 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 it never works. And all it really is, and the minute I saw this, I was like, all right, it's just a mirror. It's just a reflection, okay? What's going on internally is always, like, happening externally. If I want to know what the majority of my clients, my following, my people are struggling with, I just look around. What is the level of consciousness that's going on? The woman who sent me this message, and for those of you who are just joining us, the message is we're you know, raising awareness about domestic abuse. Women disappear from social media today to show men what the world would be like without us. <laughs> well, why don't we take a thought, like think for a moment what the world would be like without amazing men. 97% of men are absolutely amazing, loving beings. And yet they become demonized. They become the problem. They become bad. Okay, so when we do this, my, oh, I want to read what these comments are. Guilty of this with my own husband. Yeah. He has many gifts that I don't possess, but get frustrated when his brain doesn't work like mine. Definitely work on that. Yes. Okay, so again, I want to remind you all how differently masculine and feminine brains work. So um, internally, when you're operating in your masculine energy, that's when you're like single focused on a goal. You're accomplishing. You're going and getting the kill. You're doing it. And, and things are moving along. When you're in your feminine, it's more of like the bigger picture and vision and intuition and spontaneity and um, like playfulness and, and things like that. And I'm talking about like when you're operating in the divine highest light version of these things, okay? Now, one of the big ways that we misunderstand masculine energy is we do not give it the time and the space to really speak. And again, this is also mentioned in this book, but and I'm just going to go here for a minute because I just saw a bunch of amazing men join us. Women think very quickly and think in a way that's very like the whole universe all at one time. And I'm being super general here because men have feminine energy and capable of these same things and women blah, 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 blah. It doesn't matter. Typically in a relationship or in a conversation, women will ask a man something, right? Like, what do you think about this? And men, because they're so expert at single focus they will take wherever their attention was and they'll bring it in and they'll do a single focus. And then their goal is to deliver the best answer. So then they go into their mind and they are 
articulating and coming up with a brilliant response. And sometimes men, because of the way women demonize them, approach women with some mistrust. Because in the past, they say it word like slightly wrong and they get fucking thrown under the bus or railroaded and, and, and accused of being ignorant and selfish and an asshole and all of these things when the, they didn't mean it at all that way. They, they, they're, they didn't mean it that way, but this happens. So men are trying to be so calculated because they have no idea if they are about to step into a fucking trap <laughs> and men who are watching this, give me a one. If you know what I'm talking about and women, give me actually give me a two. Cause we already did ones. Give me a two. If you're a woman and you've done this and give me a two, if you're a man and you know what this feels like. All right. So you, you, you're wanting to have this conversation. You're wanting to open up. You're wanting to do these things, but there's this fear. So men go into their mind and they're calculating. They're like, okay. Like, what's the best answer to deliver? And in the meantime, because women are like freaking out, they've reworded the question. And then the guy's like, oh shit, okay. So the, it's a little bit of a different question. And all the time, the women's sitting there like, he's so slow. He's fucking dumb. Like, he's not even listening. He doesn't care. He must not love me. I must not be good enough. I must not be worthy of his full attention or him actually caring. Or all he cares about is work. Or all he cares about, blah, 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 blah. And they're in their head. And they're freaking out. Freaking out. And meanwhile, the man is like, oh shit, like... Okay, so that was the question. Now this is the question. And the way she worded the question, why did she change the question? Did I do something wrong? Did I do something bad here? And then immediately the woman's like, shit, he's still not answering. So she starts giving him multiple choice. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. You start giving them multiple choice. Like, oh, well, maybe this is what you mean or this is what you think, blah, blah, blah. And mul the multiple choice that the woman provides is always from a woman's perspective and from her own little world of understanding and is completely disconnected and has nothing to do with where the man's actually even coming from. If women would take a minute, and I know it's tricky because we love to speak, <laughs> here I am speaking, to slow down and shut the fuck up and wait and let our man, let our men, let the masculine energy inside of you speak. And when you stop talking and you wait, they not only will speak once, but they'll go back into the vault, into the genius-ness that is, men are incredibly deep and intelligent. But women often have this perception that they're shallow, that they're driven by one thing, sex or power or whatever it is. And that's not true. It's completely not true. When a man is demasculinated or castrated, and again, your masculine energy inside of you, it, it can become that way and it can appear that way because they're grasping to try to restore their manhood because they've been emasculated, they've been castrated and they're trying to navigate all this shit. But if we will just hold on, if we will just pause, if we will just listen, we will be shocked. This happened to me in December. My husband was incredibly distracted. I felt like unfocused. I'm like, where is your head? <laughs> and I felt not a priority. I felt like my feelings didn't matter. I was feeling all of this stuff, which I hadn't felt in a long time. Right. And I started like <laughs> flirting with my old patterns of destructiveness in our relationship. And I stopped and I was like, okay, <laughs> what is real? What is real? What is real? And I had a really fantastic coach that was assisting me in navigating some of this stuff. And then my anniversary came and typically my husband gets me flowers on our anniversary and that's it. We don't do a lot because it's four days before Christmas. So on December 21st, I came down the stairs and there was flowers and there was chocolates, like my favorite kind of chocolates, like these fancy dark chocolate, you know, a box of chocolates. And I couldn't believe it. I was like, oh my gosh, I feel so spoiled and adored. This is amazing. And I was just like so grateful. And then, um, about an hour later, I came back down out of my office and my husband had this really goofy grin on his face. I was like, what's going on? And he handed me this little tiny bag, like a little tiny gift bag. And I pulled out a ring box. And I, I was like, so shocked. I, I didn't even know what to do. And I started crying and I opened up and my husband had gotten me an anniversary ring. So this is our seven year. Isn't this gorgeous? And it's a really unique setting, a setting that I love that's really tricky to find. And um, that's what he'd gotten me. And the crazy thing is, first of all, I was surprised. I was surprised because I'd been demonizing him. 
And of course, it's great that he was able to surprise me, but the goal, the ideal would be that when men are fucking amazing and phenomenal beings, which they actually truly are, we're not surprised at all. Because it's the surprise means that you, would ex you expected something else. What were you expecting? Your expectation, your view and framing of your own masculine energy and the men on the planet is part of the problem is part of what's perpetuating the negative vicious cycle. I'm not saying, oh, it's women's fault that a kid, you know, there are dangerous men that are abusive or rape. No, like going into the fault game never fucking works. Stop blaming men. Stop blaming, like stop. Everybody's, you know, just own 100% responsibility for the part you play in the collective consciousness of creating what is our collective reality. Just own your place in it rather than like, oh, 97% is my fault or 3% is my fault or 80. Like, no, 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 no more fault, just responsibility. And we all equally get to step into that space. My husband gave me this ring and I was incredibly emotional and come to find out he had spent over like 17 hours or something crazy researching and finding this exact setting, my exact size, all of these things for me. And then three days later, um, when we're getting ready to leave on our trip to Oklahoma, he gave me this amazing luggage set. It's like this floral print luggage set that's so cool that I had mentioned a few months earlier when we walked into a store and we saw this exact set. I said, I love that. I want that. And then he went back to the store and it was gone. So he'd been researching online. He said it only took him like three hours to do that one to find this exact print, this exact brand, this exact luggage set that I wanted. And this whole time that he's doing this, I'm in my head assuming and, and creating an expectation that he just doesn't care about me, that he's, you know, whatever the fuck I thought he was doing. Now, I'm not saying every time men are, not you know, you feel like you're not getting the attention you want or blah, 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 that they're actually buying you something. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is more often than not, we create an assumption about masculine energy, about men in our life that is incredibly shallow, incredibly limited, and incredibly damaging to connection, to relationship, and to solution. So what this translates to you, for you in your business is no longer demonizing the part of you that wants to be successful, that's competitive. There's a part of you that's competitive, and there's a part of you that's has big goals. You're, there's a part of you that's very money success driven. And as like a spiritual healer or coach or soldier of an entrepreneur, you demonize that, make that wrong or make that bad, or you're afraid of that. Or when it does take action, it's never enough, right? It's like, oh, that's not enough money or that's not enough this, or that's not enough that. I hope you guys are seeing this huge, huge chasm. And I could, I could probably talk up on this topic for, I don't know, probably at least eight to nine hours. Um, and then if we would throw in a Q and A and a little bit of coaching, it could be like 30, <laughs> which is why I do retreats and I do coaching. This is really important. You guys, please share this message out, um, privately. If you would privately message or share this to any women that you see that have blacked out their profile picture, um, let's not tag them publicly or do any weird shit like that, but let's share this out. You guys, let's start talking about and really looking at the way that we, like create blame and fault in one per, like category. And if you're just joining us, please watch the beginning where I read an excerpt from this book talking about when men, when women attack men and make all men bad and wrong, they're so busy defending themselves that they can't actually defend and protect you. This is really, really important. I love you guys so much. Have an amazing weekend and uh, I'll talk to you guys again, hopefully very soon.